Hi guys and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course for Beginners. Today we're talking about phishing. We're going to have a fun discussion today. I'm going to show you some demos and we are going to learn a lot of things about phishing today. Phishing is one of my favorite cybersecurity topics. We have done a lot of social engineering engagements over the years, which means we are hired by organizations to try to fish their employees. And we have come up with a strategy that works every time for us. We have a 100% success rate because we have figured out what ticks people, what makes them want to click a link, what makes them want to log in. And understanding that, we can sh show them how to avoid it. So this is lesson five in our 12 part cybersecurity crash course. If you have not watched the previous lessons, go back and watch them. There's a lot of foundational information that builds in this course. So be sure you go watch those and come back and watch this when you're done. One final thing before we get going here, be sure that you go and you download the companion guide. There's a, lots of exercises in there. All the tools we talk about, there will be links to them in there. Go get the companion guide. You're going to want to use that for your own research. And with that, let's get talking about phishing. But before we can talk about phishing, let's talk about what is social engineering. Because phishing is really just a type of social engineering. And social engineering is the use of deception to manipulate an individual into divulging confidential information or personal information, or getting them to take an action that is not in their best interest. I don't necessarily have to fish someone for credentials. I might fish them to give me information. Here's an example. We were on a penetration test once, and we were trying to develop custom malware to get around the security system of the organization. We used a vishing in this case, phone phishing, called up someone, came up with a ploy, a scenario, and got them to tell us what type of antivirus they had. That was social engineering. It was not in that individual's or their company's best interest to tell us what kind of antivirus they were using. There are different types of phishing. There's email, and there is SMS. So email phishing is, like it sounds, sent via email. And the attackers usually will use a domain very similar to that of your organization. So if your company is company.com, C-O-M-P-A-N-Y.com, the attacker might try to use company with a zero instead of an O.com. And they might spoof your domain. They might try to make the email headers look like it is coming from someone inside of your organization when it's actually not. Then there's SMS phishing, and this could come in a text or an SMS format. Either way, what the attacker is trying to do is they want to look real, look like something legitimate. They want to, they always create a sense of urgency because People respond two ways, logically or emotionally. And if a person responds logically, they're going to catch on, right? They're going to see something's wrong. But when people respond emotionally, they are more prone to make mistakes. Think about it in your own life. When you are upset or displeased or angry about something, you make irrational decisions sometimes, don't you? And this is what the attackers want. They want the individual to have some kind of emotion so that they make an irrational decision and they take the action that the attacker wants. And all of this is done to get you to either click on a link or to log in somewhere most of the time or to respond with some kind of information, but that's not the most common. And I'm going to give you an example of this at the end, so stick around, of a very successful fish that we did at an organization during a social engineering engagement and how we even got around multi-factor authentication. So be sure you stick around to the end and we'll look at that. So the telltale signs of phishing is someone at your organization gets a call or a text message asking them to click a link, to give them a password, to give them their bank account or some other kind of sensitive information. And as you know, a 
all of these actions are very risky. But in your organization, you should work to create policies and procedures that make any of these three items abnormal. So if you are in IT, you should never ask your employees to give you their password. And you should make a point that they understand you don't want their passwords. There's other ways you can get into their accounts. You can temporarily reset it, let them set it back, whatever. But make a point that they understand you're not going to ask them for their passwords. So that should an attacker ask them for their passwords. They know something is wrong because IT doesn't do that. Clicking a link. If you can avoid sending links, then that's a great way to do it. And then bank account information. Set policies or procedures for how that kind of information is shared in person, over the phone, something of that nature, so that it's not sent through email and the people are not used to it. If they're not used to it, it's going to stand out when an attacker tries to get them to do it. So let's take a look at an example SMS phishing. Because I, uh, I told you we have an email example at the end. But this is a way that SMS phishing could happen. The individual gets a text just like this that says alert. A recent purchase on your Amazon account for X amount of money seems suspicious to us. If this purchase was made by you, you can ignore this. If you did not make this purchase, please reply stop. See, nothing unusual other than the Amazon account. And what does this do? It creates a sense of urgency. Oh no, someone just took $1,200 out of my bank account. But it's not asking for anything, right? So the individual replies, stop, to stop the transaction. What does the, the fisher or the scammer do next? They send another message that says, okay, we will stop the order. Please just log in and verify your account ownership. And there's a link. Now, shortened URLs are always a risk. If you see a shortened URL, take alert. Attackers do this to try to cover their domains, to cover the link you're actually going to. There are ways to figure out who this is, though, and I'll show you that. Copy the link without clicking on it. Copy it and go to a site called Browserling. B-R-O-W-S-E-R-L-I-N-G. And Browserling will allow you to load a it's kind of like a virtual instance of an opera, a browser, and you can put the URLs on there and you can check them without ever running them on your computers. So what are the characteristics that you can look for and you can tell your employees to look for for phishing. First of all, they're going to seem real, so that's a given. They always have a sense of urgency, and they're usually wanting you to click on something or to log into a portal. But that is the telltale signs of the phishing email or text. Look at this example, phish email. Look at the from address. It's PayPal is what it says, but the actual email address is something weird, 1246 lkda at gmail.com and the email itself might look legitimate about illegal activity but they always want you to click a link so instead of clicking the link how to spot it and avoid it like we mentioned with browser link check the urls it requires you to be vigilant one of the things that attackers bank on is everyone's busy and everyone has a ton to do, and everyone's trying to get through their day quickly. And they want you to overlook things in your haste and make mistakes. So, when you get emails like this, slow down, take a minute to analyze them, and ensure you're taking the right course of action. Next, you can look at those email headers like we just looked at with the PayPal email account. Those headers showed that the email address was not from PayPal, it was from a Gmail Next, if you're still struggling to figure out something's legitimate, you're just not quite sure, you can always ask a friend, ask someone else to read it, see what they think. And one of the best ways is to call the sender. If there's an e a phone number in the email, don't use that number. Go back to a number that you know. If this is someone in your company, go to your company directory and find their number, find their extension to call them. If this is an organization like PayPal, don't click the link to log into your account. Go to, go to Google and go to, or whatever browser you use, and go to paypal.com and log in there and look and find their phone number. Call them if you need to. 
And finally, train your employees. The more you train them, the more aware they become of the issue. And I'm not talking about a once a year annual security awareness training. It doesn't work. If you don't keep it in front of your employees, they forget about it, they overlook it, it gets old, not important to them. But if you keep it in front of your employees, keep them aware of it, they will begin catching phishing emails, they'll begin alerting you, and even if they miss some, there's gonna be a lot more that they do catch, and you reduce the risk. So to help you with this, we partner with an organization to provide free security awareness training that you can use for your employees. You can get it at training.cyberx.tech. You can get free security awareness training videos that are short that you can send to your users to train them to avoid the risk. So before we wrap up, and I wanna show you a call we had with an organization where we got where we were successful phishing and we were even able to get around multi-factor authentication. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. It is from the security team that this. Yeah, hey. Um yeah. <laughs> we were working on a office upgrade and had a little issue and some of the accounts have been locked out and we wanted to it looks like yours is not locked out yet. Um we had an access management upgrade go sort of south. Uh-huh. Um so if I send you a code, can you send that to me so we can get your account reactivated before it locks you out of everything? Just to make sure I'm covering my bases, is this your cell phone you're calling me from? Yeah, I'm actually on vacation, but because of the issue, <laughs> I'm using right. my VoIP client. All right, here. Always concerned last year I got hit with that social engineering stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All, never trust, always verify. Yeah, and the last night. Where are you on vacation? I'm up at a cabin in the mountains. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yep, taking a little break. So you have a upgrade that has gone awry? Yeah. Back in with the active directory in the office sync portal. All right, so are you going to send me a code through my email? No, it's just going to send you a code to a text. To which phone? Um, it's showing the one that ends in We can't see the actual number because of security reasons, of course. But. Okay. All right, it should be just in it. 603930. 603930? 603 903 yeah. yeah. Perfect. You should be good to go. All right, thanks. Thank you. Don't want to interrupt your day. That'd be not, not nice, huh? <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Have fun on your vacation. Thank you.